it's only if it's an action movie that that's it's an that action bad. Movie. So, it, so the requirement is an action. There's movie. There's a lot of '80s action movies that are so bad that they're funny. But then, if it's a movie that you also find funny, whether it's intentional or not, that counts as an action comedy. Yeah, I'll go with that. Under the Ryan Accords. Yes. Okay. We need to list these out. But there are plenty site. of planned comedy actions or action comedies <laughs> or comedy action comedies. Uh huh. <laughs> that would that would count. And Thor might just be the best one in a decade. Uh, that, it's a freaking decade. good. You're saying a decade? I don't know. It's hard to look back. There's probably a bunch of movies I'm forgetting. No, I mean I think. But it was so good that within the first ten minutes, both my wife and I said we want to see this again. This is past the Ryan Accords. All right. Hello. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is between the streams. This is our weekly entertainment podcast. We made it. We talk about. It. We did. We're we're live right now. If you're watching on Facebook and YouTube, had a little bit of uh, delay there. Maybe a couple false starts, but hopefully you're with us right now. And and uh, we have a lot to talk about today. There's a lot of stuff going on in the world of entertainment and movies. We want to hear your thoughts and your opinions on everything we're going to be covering. And one of the main questions we put up here at the beginning, uh, just for everybody, again, watching live, to drop your comments on, is what is the best action comedy of all time, according to you? And we're bringing that up because Thor Ragnarok is out in the theaters right now. It's going to be, what, a $200 million film over this weekend alone? <laughs> They pay, they spent two hundred million dollars on the film. Two hundred million dollars on the film. It's gonna make way more. Than it's that. gonna make this weekend. They hope around one hundred and ten to one hundred and twenty million. I I think it might even be able to do better than that, which is Batman versus Superman money. That's crazy. Yeah. All right, that's a lot of money. All right, well, I'm Greg Nibbler. I'm Ryan Juanita. So let's get into this and talk about this. And, and again, drop your comments in there on YouTube and Facebook. Let us know what your favorite action comedy is. And just to define action comedy, Ryan. Yes. Can you one more time, just really quick, define according to the Ryan Accords what <laughs> what action comedy <laughs> well there's lots of action comedies out there uh, beverly hills cop that's a great example of one sure. uh lethal weapon that series is a great example it's usually cop buddy comedies but there's, yeah. there are others out there pineapple express is more of a comedy action if you will it comes from the mind of seth rogan he's comedy first but action second okay but a lot of these action comedies are just you know really like cop movies or just big like shoot 'em up movies that have a lot of like you know, comedic moments in between. Thor Ragnarok is somewhere in the middle there, but it is probably the biggest budget that you would consider an action comedy yeah. of all time. Because of all, yeah, CGI. They gave Taika Waititi uh, this humongous budget. He is one of our favorite directors, as we've been talking about, which is why we're so excited about Thor. But nobody, he'd never done a movie that was anything like Thor. Yeah. And uh, he just went with his normal sensibility and created this sort of masterpiece as far as i'm concerned okay well, but we want to get into it this. does sit along with a lot of other kind of movies it's a superhero action comedy okay so the right it's all about the comedy. hybrids these days that's what it is it's all about the hybrids all right well let's let's get into this and, and take a look so we have some questions that are coming in and we're going to yeah. talk about thor we're going to give a spoiler free review of thor because ryan did see it last night i am excited to see it and that's kind of what we got into this talking about action comedies with um a couple of comments coming in i'm seeing uh last action hero that is a great one, good one. soundtrack also incredible on the kid's really hero. annoying but it's all right but the, sa the soundtrack <laughs> <laughs> makes it worth it yeah it does have a good soundtrack vicky is asking uh ryan our our uh, accords expert here our, our action comedy expert uh, does die hard fit in the category absolutely die I, hard I would say so action comedy I, I think it's mostly uh mostly action but i mean bruce willis is, is you know he drops a lot of comedy okay yeah. he's dro dropping the comedy on the, on the, <laughs> all over it all right so that one does count so yeah this is a this is an interesting thing to take think about here about what the best one is uh, what about teenage mutant ninja turtles would that count does that nah. count as an action comedy? Because I did I, just. I guess I could see that. I guess I could see that. Yeah, yeah. The original one. Yeah. Because it was a good movie. That's That's a, it's crazy movie. that they even made that movie when you think about yeah. it. Dudes in huge turtle suits running around. Yeah. <laughs> that basically. was like pre CGI. That was pretty interesting. That's exactly it. Yeah. Uh, Ralph says when action movies turn comedic, they've jumped the shark and it's over. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. We need to talk, buddy. <laughs> so many good blends of flavors out there. You just got to get used to the blend. You just got to find the, find the flavor that And that's for what uh, Thor does so well, is find that sort of middle ground now some people thought yeah. he went too far over the top and i have to admit that uh where td is ever since uh, what we do in the shadows he just gets you know i get his stuff he gets what i think is funny and what i think is interesting so that's maybe why this clicked so much for me but it is also being called the best reviewed marvel movie ever well let's let's break this down and talk about thor so yeah um and get because i have not seen it yet ryan has seen it there's going to be no spoilers on this i already see some people courtney looks like has already seen it i'm, I'm hoping to see it soon but um let's let's talk about where we're at right now what do we have and and what is this you know really all about i'm taking a look here uh just kind of adjusting a couple of things but um why don't you give us kind of a breakdown you know 
you you keep saying Taiki or Taika. Yeah. Taika. Yes. Taika. YTD. Maybe well, there's people out there who don't know who that is. I'm sure there are. Um, he worked with your BFF, Jermaine right? Clement on What We Do in the Shadows, which is, uh, you know, I know we're throwing out a lot of what sounds like hyperbole, but I also believe that that movie is the best mockumentary since Spinal Tap. Um, and what we're talking about is mm-hmm. here is blending a lot of different kinds of flavors into something new. Um, the action comedy genre has always been sort of like that, but bringing it into the superhero realm we they did it with deadpool yeah to great effect deadpool that's right that would be a great action absolutely okay. and that that is a great um example of how to do it in the superhero realm but that was sort of uh you know pretty unique at the time and i think what he does with this movie is also unique because it is so big budget is so grand scale and then all of a sudden you have jeff goldblum in the middle of it giving yeah. one of the best performances that i've seen from him in a decade really you have tessa thompson killing it you have uh you have helmsworth giving his best comedic performance so far you have a reinventing of the Thor franchise and what I consider to possibly be the best Marvel movie yet. That's a bold statement. I know, and I love Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, and they are sort of comparable, but this one takes it to that next level of just sort of... I've never seen something like this before, I guess, is, is the thought Some, in your mind. That, and that's that's a bold thing for Marvel to do alone, just with how yeah. many different styles of movies they put out. Well, and superhero you know, movies have been running so long, they have to figure out ways to, to mix to it up. To change it up. As Logan did, as Deadpool did. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and you know, I mean, we, we talked about, you know, Spider-Man Homecoming. A lot of people thought that was sure, the best Marvel movie that was made of all time. Yeah. And, and we, we even had this too. discussion on this show not very long ago as far as just like the Marvel side of it. Right. And and you could yeah. say that every Marvel movie adds a little comedy, uh, courtesy usually of Robert Downey Jr. Sure. But yeah. this one or takes Paul it to Rudd that or, next yeah. level sort of in the Deadpool realm where it's like almost as much comedy as it is action. Wow. And it, and it tips you off right away. You know you know that going in and whether you're up for the ride or not, you know, that that's probably depends on you but uh, most people are. I, I Like I said, I don't have often that feeling like I want to go to this movie again immediately. Yeah. Um, at one point, I was pounding my fist against my uh, my legs and Wait, almost you jumping out of my seat. In the theater? I was so you're... excited, yeah. <laughs> uh, there are some action scenes that just are sort of mind-blowing. Um, one of the really cool things, and I, again, I don't want to give much away, but yeah. one of the really cool things is the, um, the paradigm between Hulk and... Hulk and, uh, and you know Thor. Thor because they have this this weird thing where they're both like the strongest Avengers basically and right and the, and so there's a lot of interesting things happening there. So you get kind of the buddy side of it there. You and get then the buddy it. side. You get Loki back in it. Tom Hiddleston does a great job. My favorite character in all Marvel movies, and he's is great Loki. in this yeah. one as well. He's not my favorite in the movie. Uh, Tessa Thompson's character, uh, I don't want to give away, but she yeah. she is integral and fantastic. Um, I'm taking a look here just in the chat. Uh, Courtney, who who did see it on Facebook, said. Uh, Hemsworth embraced the meathead side of Thor. <laughs> so that's how she's looking at Actually, it. Actually, I would I would not say that. Uh, to me, this is even though it has that much comedy. To me, this is the most evolved Thor's ever been. Yeah. I mean, he does sort of make that sort of evolution from I'm Big Bad Thor to I've learned something in <laughs> all three Thor. of the movies. He sort of learned something, uh, uh, sort of sta- Saved by the Bell style. <laughs> but in this one, he seems like a more evolved character. Like he's better at taking the punches, and he knows more about uh, what it's going to take to sort of take over the role. Um, yeah. Uh, you know. F- for his for his country for his uh, realm for, for yeah, yeah, yeah Asgard yeah Asgard um taking a look here too about just talking about action comedies in general again if you drop it in your comments here and we're going to talk about a few other things today as well we've got lots of television and entertainment news to bring up um, but for action comedies the other guys is being mentioned Spaceballs 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 <laughs> yeah I mean I said I'd say that's action sci-fi or I mean comedy sci-fi okay. yeah yeah I am sorry according to the Ryan Accords <laughs> that Spaceballs there's some action qualify. there though there's some action right <laughs> Ryan will decide if it's funny or, or which one it falls in um, Felipe saying there's uh, some leeway here oh Deadpool 2 come on please yeah Deadpool yeah 2 well is, Deadpool 2 gonna is be, probably going to be fantastic yeah, you know but I would but imagine it will be I think the thing that for me Thor did the most is raise the stakes raise the bar not just for Thor because I think the bar was pretty low for Thor I mean, it's a you know, good franchise but lower in the Marvel you know, realm in their cinematic universe. But for me, what it is is sort of raise the bar for all superhero movies. Yeah. It really does. I, I think Avengers did that when that came out. I think Avengers 2 stepped back a little bit. I think uh, Winter Soldier did that a little bit. And uh, I think Thor does that. Okay. So Thor, definitely worth it. And you said you're going to, you're going to go see it again. Yeah. I'm going to see it again. Yeah, I have a reason to. My friend didn't get to come with us, and so I was like, okay, I'll go with you. <laughs> All right. I saw the, the last one that I saw twice in the theater was Star Wars. Um, oh, gosh. What was, the, what was the episode 
seven. Now I'm forgetting which what the name of it was. Uh, the Force, the Awakens. Force Awakens. Thank yes. you. Why I'm blanking on that, I don't know. I saw The Force Awakens twice. That's the last time I've seen a movie twice. And that was totally totally doable. Uh, yeah. I also really loved Rogue One. I would have, one, I would have yeah. seen that twice. I usually oh, just don't you know have time. I take that back. I did see Rogue One twice. Yeah, <laughs> I did exactly. see Rogue One twice. In so every once in a while there's yeah. movies like that. But I really haven't had that moment where I'm like, I have to see this again for yeah. a while. It's been a while. All right. Well, Thor in theaters yes. right now looking to probably break some kind of a record, I would imagine. Or We're going to see what's going to happen. I won't be surprised if it if it does break some Marvel records. All right. Well, and it's not the only movie out in the theaters this weekend. There's a, we got a couple of more just to kind of hit for the box office. And oh, I want to keep talking some... about Thor. No, well, we can. We can keep talking about <laughs> Thor. Like but we do we have some on. more news, actually, about the Thor director that I want to bring up. So, yes. Taiki Watiti, there's some some more news about him, and you should remember his name. Oh, uh, you will remember his yeah. name soon. <laughs> so, just briefly, uh, a couple of the other movies that are out at the box office right now before we get back into that. Um, LBJ is out, you know, obviously about Lyndon uh, B. Johnson, so president, and it's Woody Harrelson. Yeah, Woody Harrelson, him. Rob Reiner directing, pretty decent cast. They got Bill Pullman in there. Yeah. Um, it, unfortunately, it's not doing as well as we had hoped. Well, it's going up against Thor. It I is. Mean, I just mean, go to a I, I, sorry, I just mean from the critics. Oh, I don't critics think anybody thought this was going to break any records, but, you know, it, it's probably still going to be entertaining. If you like Woody Harrelson, I'm assuming it's still going to be a, a you know good enough watch. I would have a hard time, and I, I do like Woody Harrelson, and obviously he's great in The, the People versus Larry Flint, because he kind of is that guy yeah i have a hard time separating him if he's gonna be you know in a, in a biopic playing somebody else it's hard it will be hard for me not to see him as just oh that's woody harrelson with a prosthetic on you know <laughs> it's like tom hanks like well, oh that's tom it, hanks with funny hair it's always you hard know, when know. they put on like a fake nose and yeah you're just like i see the nose but yeah. well so lbj is on the theater right now but the other one to talk about real quickly is ladybird so yeah. for those who are looking for just you know the whole Oscar bait type of situation. Uh-huh. This one looks like it's going to be which, in the conversation, which is not about Lady Bird Johnson because I saw that LBJ. I'm I like, know, isn't that so funny? LBJ and Lady Bird, the guy, yeah. they each also get no other? connection to King of the Hill. Okay, <laughs> all right. So so neither. Uh, it's about a girl. It's set in Sacramento, California, in 2002. It's about a girl's relationship with her mother. They're very alike, so there's a lot of fighting there. It's also sort of broadly, from what we understand, uh, a story just about uh, America at a very pivotal time. This is after mm-hmm. 9/11, so there's a lot going going on right there sort of in the in the context okay uh, yeah so but it's just getting crazy good reviews 70 review 70 reviews in all positive 100 percent right now on rotten tomatoes all right and it's also at an 8.7 average okay so that's really important that means everyone not only liked it everyone pretty much loved it okay so all right so ladybird out in the theater right now as well so a couple of other options if you're if you want to see but more than thor. just thor but yeah <laughs> thor's clearly the recommendation yeah. here for this weekend um all right well speaking of thor getting back to this and again keep on dropping in what your favorite action comedy of all time is but uh taika i want to make sure that i'm saying the name right because this is the name yeah. you need to know the director yeah. of thor Ryan, you go ahead. And I think it's Taika Waititi. That's Taika Waititi. It is, yeah. That is right. Okay, I just want to make sure, and then if we're wrong, I'm going to blame you. <laughs> yeah, so that's fine. Taika Waititi, the, the director of Thor Ragnarok, also director of one of the best mockumentaries that, if you have not seen it, you definitely need to see it, and it is What We Do in the Shadows. And for those who don't know, a mockumentary would be Spinal Tap. It would be yeah. pretty much anything Christopher Guest has ever done. Right. Uh, a Mighty Wind. A lot of people know Best in Show. That's a mm-hmm. big one. So. And this one, uh, What We Do in the Shadows, is his creation. He also stars in it, or he's one of the creators and, and stars in it. And it is about a coven of vampires living in the modern day, and they get a reality show with Jermaine Clement. Yeah, Jermaine Clement, who is uh, amazing. In it. Uh, it is, it's ridiculous. And it, I, it was one of those things where I saw the premise. I'm like, oh yeah, okay, I don't know about this. Yeah, it's one of the absolutely. funniest movies I've seen in a long, long time. It's just so good. You kind of figure there's no way it could be funny or, or you know, there's yeah. no way they could pull it off and uh, they just, it's you know, knock brilliant. it out of the park. It's yeah. just brilliant. And the reason I talk about this one a lot, well, one is because Thor was coming up, but two, it's because uh, this one just didn't get much play in the theaters. In fact, yeah. it wasn't available in most theaters. Yeah, it got overlooked. I mean, yeah. I, I saw it at, I sort of a cult classic. I'll double check what streaming services it is on right now. You could only get it here in Portland in like one of those smaller, you know, I think it was Century 21, like up the street. Oh, but when it was it wasn't yeah, in the theater. Hardly but you can anything. stream it now, yes. and, and so there's. I think there's just several other places you can stream it. At least Absolutely. it's on Amazon Prime. Yeah, I feel like this is going to get a uh, another shot now. Yeah, <laughs> now and, that he's big time, and that's part of this. So yeah. again, find what we do in the shadows somewhere to stream it from somewhere. And uh, on top of that, so Taika Watiti is now in talks to bring, turn it into a television series, which I think would be absolutely brilliant. As long uh, as they do it right, I think it could be great. If he's in charge of it and he's the one who wants yeah. to do it at this point, I mean, he's kind of he's kind of 
the it guy. Well, I mean, what could really sell it is if they were in it, but I just I have a feeling that's not going to happen. If he and Jermaine were in it, that would be amazing, but he's probably going to be off doing a new Star Wars or who God knows what. He sort of has his in, pick yeah. now because yeah, he's, I think Thor is going to like sh- make so many waves. And well, and that's what the the premise for the television series would probably be set in America instead of New Zealand. Right. So it'd be different actors, but if he's in charge of it and they're they're talking about, you know, maybe HBO, Showtime, Star, something like that. So R rated, which it would need to be. Yeah, and I feel like he can probably write his own ticket. And I think like we were saying earlier, HBO needs some better comedies. I mean, they, they have do. some good ones, but they have haven't had a real comedy hit for a while yeah so this would be i think a perfect home for that play for Ab- that show absolutely so there's going to be a spin-off of that and also what we do in the shadows there are werewolves that are kind of <laughs> the rivals to the vampires in yeah. this and uh, again it's all a reality show mockumentary style and and for those who have seen flight of the concords just to yeah. just to kick back that's kind of where a lot of this very comes similar from as well. yeah. yeah yeah a lot of that same kind of humor and they are working on one uh, spin-off just for the werewolves starring called- murray from flight of the Concords. yes yeah. exactly so we're called werewolves <laughs> So, we are wolves. Yeah, we're wolves. <laughs> yeah, we're wolves. Uh, so yeah. that is going to be uh, something coming out. Uh, hopefully, hopefully soon that we'll be able to see that. Um, hello to everybody who's joining in in the chat too. So again, we're at the top of the show. We're talking about action comedy. So you can go ahead and feel free to drop in your favorite action comedy. Talked about Thor. We got to get to some other things though. Um, and Star Wars, which we did bring up earlier, is yes. is coming up pretty quick. Just a little over a I month. No, right? It's really coming at us. Yeah, December fifteenth is when Star Wars: The Last Jedi will finally be in the theaters, and we're getting kind of our last run. I think of trailers. I'm going to guess this will be the last new one that we get. Yeah. Um, and we, we did get one of those that came out uh, over this last uh, couple of, I guess, last week. Is what came out. And it is starting to show that this movie is trending to the to be dark. A yeah, dark I mean, tone. you got to go dark for the middle movie. You do. The middle of the trilogy goes dark, and then hopefully you come back out of it. Uh, certainly not a Star Wars only thing, although mm. people have, you know gotten a little bit they've mocked this series for being too much like the original trilogy but pretty much every trilogy yeah, has a dark one in the middle it works <laughs> yeah exactly. i mean what are you gonna do yeah and i think this one may take some turns that we weren't expecting mm-hmm. or that at least those who haven't been paying you know as much attention as we have weren't yeah. expecting uh, we think that there might be some sort of shake up with the jedi uh they, what's luke gonna be yeah we don't know um Who's luke going for and yeah for me what did you think of this trailer i like it yeah, I, I think it, it makes me want to see it even more. It's not like I wasn't going to go see it. Sure. And I'm actually seeing it opening night. Yeah, already got the tickets. Yeah, I got the tickets. Yeah, we got the tickets. Yeah, so... I really like the scene where he's flying um, through the ship and deciding whether to kill yeah. his mom, which, sorry, yeah. that's a spoiler, but it's in the well, trailer. it's in the trailer. Yeah. I don't think that's spoiling anything. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, for me, though, every time I see another piece, I'm just like... I'm sort of fed up with not knowing what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's so many, every, every new glimpse seems to raise new questions and I kind of just want those questions to be answered at this point. I'm, I, I guess I'm just being very impatient. <laughs> I, just, I want it to be you? in theaters now. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, dude, just, just show me the money. <laughs> show, the, show the money. <laughs> uh, one other thing that we did find out, uh, the president of Lucasfilm, said that right now they're kind of sitting down and planning out the next 10 years of stories. <laughs> Kathleen Kennedy, yeah. <laughs> in the Star Wars universe. And it's sounding more and more like Ray and Finn, those characters will extend beyond Episode Nine into yeah. whatever they decide to do, solo movies or who knows. The characters will continue on for right. the unforeseeable future. For like the next 10 years at least, they say? Or, or the, did they just say beyond ten, nine? They're planning 10 yeah. years out, and they're saying those two characters will be a part of that 10-year plan. Yeah, that's who's going to hold it down, it sounds like. So yeah. that's interesting. We'll see where they go from this. They're, they're in danger of watering things down. They too, are. Like at a certain point. I mean, they're going to have to start making Star Wars, you know, like into something else. I, I assume. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, sort of the same way they've been doing with superhero movies. Right. Well, they'll milk the money as long as they can. Yeah, that's they will. That's exactly what they'll do. Uh, and so there, that's what we uh, kind of find out about that. But again, I'm sure we'll be talking more about Star Wars in the next month. December 15th is the official uh, day, although I'm seeing it on December 14th that night. Uh, yeah, we also before. found out that, sorry. Oh, we also ahead. found out the C three PO. Oh, that's right. Going to make an Thank appearance. You. Yes, C three PO will be there. Okay. Yay, C three PO. I like three PO. I I do too. It's I'm funny. sure I'll just say something annoying yes. and then he'll you know skitter off. Uh, so C three PO back again. Um, moving on here with uh, a few other things. <laughs> I like your I like your just wrap up. All right, C three PO. He's an idiot. He's going to say something stupid. That's fine. This, this and moving on. Oh my! Oh, Master Luke. <laughs> Yep, that's about right. And that's it. And then, you know, his arm will fall off. Oh, <laughs> and he'll be scared. There, I just wrote C-3PO's part. Nice 3PO. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, by the way, if you're planning the next 10 years, I'm open to play C-3PO. There you go. So, uh, <laughs> all right, moving on. Uh, a couple other things. Going back to the, the superhero side of things. Yeah. 
and um, this is where uh, DC is trying to mine what they have, mm-hmm. and this is a, a prequel series, which I did not know was going to be going on. It's a Superman prequel series, television series. It's going to be on FX. It's not like Smallville. It's going way prequel. Super prequel. Where it's it's called Krypton <laughs> is the name of the show, and as you can guess, it is, takes place on the planet Krypton, where Superman is from, and it's, takes, it's uh, telling the story of Superman's grandfather. So yeah. I have so many questions. Yeah. Like and for instance, Superman gets his power from the yellow sun, right? So yes. are they not powerful on Krypton? Right. So That's I think they're just question. like normal aliens. They're just with dudes. Like, like, yeah. I mean, they've got advanced technology. Yeah. And they they do have, you know, there's villains. There is a basis for this. It's based on characters created by uh, Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster. So Krypton, and it's set two generations before the destruction of Krypton. So it's as the planet's, you know, starting to die. Yeah, I it's think. about where we are right now. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so one of us could be Superman in the future that's true um <laughs> just keep that in mind that's a good that's a nice optimistic way right that's the way it. yeah somebody maybe, maybe somebody will get powers yeah 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 maybe it's good anyway it's gonna be taking place uh on fx coming out they think next year i like that it's on fx i yeah. like that it's not on the cw because you know how yeah. i feel about greg berlanti yeah I'm not a fan of his stuff not a fan he's good at what he does I'm just not a fan not a fan yeah all right, we got just a few other things here to, to kind of cover for this week. And uh, one thing that we did find out, if you didn't know this, The Lion King is getting a live-action remake, and it's it's not going to be the only one. I mean, we have Beauty and the oh, Beast. There's be a huge. bunch of them that are going to be happening. And you know why it's going to be huge. Why? Because of Queen Bay. Go <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you just said Queen Bay. Yes, Beyonce. Yeah, I, I was trying to remember if they Beyonce. say B or Bay, but I, no, think, it's, it's I think you did it right. <laughs> uh, so, yes, Beyonce has joined the cast. Yes. This is going to be in 2019, so a live action version of Which makes of sense the Lion because King. it's going to be a partially, partially a musical. There's going yes. to be a, the original songs from the movie are going to be in it. I, I imagine it's pretty similar to Beauty and the Beast. Where they're going to kind of work it in. Yeah, you know, except it's know, animals, so animals, so it's going to be so, more yeah. like Jungle, uh, the Jungle Book, which John Favreau also directed. He's just doing all live action Disney from now on, well, apparently. I mean, but I mean, the dude the, made the, the guy cast, made a billion dollars, <laughs> and the cast is pretty good. The cast it, is crazy. Donald good. Glover, Seth Rogen, Billy Eichner, Keegan Michael Key, uh, James Earl Jones, Beyonce, uh, John Oliver is yeah. in it as well. Yeah, so it's a, it's a pretty Chuelo Ejiofor, who's yeah, you know. Pe- you know he's in uh, Black Panther and he's in a bunch yep. of stuff. He's playing Scar. It's gonna be a sweet movie. Yeah, I well, mean, well, I don't know if it's gonna be a sweet movie, but they they've got they've they got, got the a good right cast. stuff. Yeah, I just they've got a good cast. Yeah. Let's put it that way. So that is gonna be coming out in 2019. Just wanted to announce though, Beyonce being put on that. That's that's probably gonna do pretty well for them. Yeah, I guess the broader question is, do we need any of these movies that are just basically they're they're calling them no. live action? But it's all CGI, so it's essentially just animated. Um, yeah. You know, some of it it's might be shot on dip. location, no, you, but it's like essentially an animated movie with just more realistic animation. Yeah, but Disney is sitting there like, okay, we have all these properties, everybody loves them. How can we get more money out of people? Yeah. Well, let's double dip. Yeah. Yeah. Put it back out. Disney boardroom. They know what they're doing. They'll make a ton of money on it. Yep. Um, Something that I'm excited about is the trend lately, and you may have noted this in a lot of uh, streaming programs, is trends towards. I want to say like sci-fi or futuristic uh, series in like Black Mirror. Black Mirror is yeah, a and somewhat example. dystopian. Dystopian, yeah. yeah it's t- talking about the future, and each episode is its own thing, a la the Twilight Zone. Twilight Zone being the original series, just like this. And now it's been come up. Uh, CBS CEO Les Moonves has said that they are working with Jordan Peele to bring back Twilight Zone with Jordan Peele producing it. That's such a great idea. I love that idea. I mean, once you wrote, once you said Jordan Peele, before that I was like, I don't know if that's a good idea. Yeah. But then when you said Jordan Peele. Jordan Peele, yes, Jordan Peele of Key and Peele, but also the writer-director of Get Out. The guy has... The, probably one of the best movies yeah, in the last five fantastic years. Fantastic movie yeah. and a perfect, it's basically an extended Twilight Zone episode. And it kind it, of is, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it really, you could you could reduce it down to that. I mean, it's, and which is a great, a great thing as far as I'm concerned. So I like this trend. That's of, a good point. Of this, you've got Electric Dreams, which is going to be on Amazon. You've right. got Black Mirror, more of those episodes coming out. You've got now Twilight Zone coming out. It's a nice you know, little reprisal. We need for... amazing stories to come back. Yeah, um, yeah, totally. <laughs> I was know. looking at that Tales from the Dark Side. Do you Tales remember that? I was side. looking at the theme of that the other day. It's cheesy but awesome. Super cheesy. It will give the you the chills through the nostalgia. Yeah. Oh <laughs> so, man. Yeah, it's fun. Uh, the out was it outline Outer Limits. Outer limits. That's. I'm just one. wondering, is it is this only directed towards people of our age, like thirty something? I don't know if anybody else cares or not. Right, but I mean, Stranger Things was also sort of that way, and everyone loved that. I so. care. Yeah, yeah. That's, I mean, you'll get my 
viewing dollars. Yeah, that's what uh, they're going for. Yeah, so that's uh, that's something that's in the works. Although it would probably be on the CBS All Access streaming service. So that's <laughs> one thing that could be a little bit of a, a hiccup on there. CBS is the one thing that bothers me about this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Two and a Half Men was their banner show for years, and now it's, you know, Big Bang Theory. Yeah, uh, that's a good so, point. So, I don't know. Okay. I don't Ryan know is, that. Ryan is questionable. But Jordan Peele, man. We'll put that as a, uh, from Ryan. We'll find out. Okay. All we'll right. find out. Okay. Uh, another series coming to HBO. And again, we just have a couple more things here to talk about for this week, because Thor really is the big story. Uh, but to let you know of some other series that are coming, uh, HBO has uh, you know if you know if you watch game of thrones you know who kit harrington is he's john snow and he is now going to his mini series called gunpowder has been acquired by hbo and it's the story of guy fox which if you don't know who guy fox is he's the guy who uh the guy who uh blew up uh parliament or they attempted, attempted to, excuse yeah, me yeah. attempted to blow up parliament yeah. back in the 17th century which then you know is sort of co-opted by v for vendetta v for vendetta which you've is, seen the masks seen the masks exactly yeah guy fox day because you always remember because he was trying to fight back for the people so anyway it's going to be the story of uh guy fox three three parts to this thing but interesting side note on this is that kit harrington is apparently distantly related to yeah. robert catsby yeah who is one of the integral character or integral players in historically in this whole story yeah so he had a good reason to do this show yeah and i believe it already premiered on bbc one but we haven't seen it so right. it's going to come over on hbo acquired by hbo yeah. so hopefully sometime next year we'll Should get be to see that uh, final kind of thing here, just wanted to bring up before we before we start wrapping up is uh, Netflix. If you watched American Vandal, and if you haven't watched it yet, it's really funny. American Vandal, also a mockumentary. Um, yeah, that's true. Uh, kind of making fun of serial style. Yeah, serial style or, or how to make a murderer. Only murder is not involved in this. It the <laughs> whole it making a murder, making a murder. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Not how to make a murder. <laughs> how to make a murder. Pretty sure I know how it happens. <laughs> making a murder. Um, it's like a step by step process. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it is along those lines, but of course, much lighter. It's it's a spoof, and it takes place at a high school, and basically a bunch of penises were drawn on teachers' cars, <laughs> and it's the question of whether or not this one kid did it or not, and that's what the whole series is about, like breaking it down. Did he do it, or yeah. did he not do it? And I mean, the question is, like, Serial, the second Serial episode, or uh, season, didn't really do as well. I liked I, that one better. Okay, did you? Yeah, okay. myself. But so I, I didn't really listen to either, so I, I, I don't have much to say on it, but it's always sort of this, you got to wonder if it's a lightning in a bottle situation like yeah. if the second time out is going to be as good but hey yeah. if you liked it just as well maybe you'll like the new american vandal maybe i mean it looks like it's going to be taking uh, like a different cast right so the way they would have to yeah you know? i i had assumed that the original american vandal was not going to be able to prolong a story across 10 episodes or whatever it was yeah about dick drawing yeah and they did it and they did <laughs> so you know i'll give them the shot i'll yeah. definitely check it out yeah so we will uh, we'll see what happens with that. That's uh, next year, I think, is when we'll get American Mandal Season 2. All right, well, just kind of wrapping up for this week's episode. Again, this is Between the Streams, if you're just tuning in. We're live every uh, Friday at 2 p.m. Pacific talking about everything. So Thor Ragnarok, you cannot say enough how great it is. Yeah, just the fact I know that you I gush sometimes, but man. You don't that and often. And you know that I actually. gushed about Guardians of the Vo uh, Galaxy Volume 2. And it was great. And interestingly enough, I was watching that movie right before I saw Thor. I was watching it to test something, and then I got caught up, and like I always do with that movie, and watch the whole damn thing. Uh, so I saw them back to back, and I just have to say that Thor is just a whole new thing. Wow, it's it's just really great. All right, so Thor, go see Thor. That is a recommendation, um, and you uh, for just and we were, we're talking about action comedies. Uh, Alan in the live chat on Facebook just said it's excellent. So it sounds like <laughs> sounds like uh, I don't have seen nothing bad about it so far there's been anybody. a few people that didn't like where it went comedy wise nah, there's also people that just don't like things yeah they just get angry <laughs> like, oh everybody likes it i don't like it ah well I I, you know they could have done this better yeah <laughs> well when i make my thor movie yeah exactly. uh, so, well anyway thor ragnarok out in theaters right now so check that out and we've got a lot of reviews and more news about all of this at digitaltrends.com of course we can check out everything that a lot of what we've been talking about and we are live every Friday at 2 p.m. Pacific, like I said. And you can send us an email, podcast at digitaltrends.com. Let us know if you have a favorite action comedy. Leave it in the comments on this or uh, send us an email and let us know. Subscribe to the audio podcast, which would be fantastic. A great way to make sure that you catch every episode that we do and all the other shows here at Digital Trends. You can find us on iTunes or Stitcher or wherever you get podcasts. You should be able to find Between the Streams on there. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it for this week. Should do it. All right. Thanks a lot, everybody. Uh, go see Thor. We'll be back next week with another episode. I think that...